Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me for this week's Object Talk. My name is Emma and I'm the Engagement Officer at the Jewish Museum in London. The object I've chosen to share with you today is one of over 40,000 objects in the Jewish Museum in London's designated collection. A collection that shows the diversity of Jewish life and culture. And our programmes exist to explore connections between faiths and cultures. Our theme for this month is, is identity. And I've chosen to share with you a print of an open air service to mark Yom Kippur. Now, many people um, will see their faith and their religion as a key part of their identity. And for Jewish people around the world, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, is the most important day of the year. It gives people time to reflect on their identity, their actions and their thoughts. However, in this print, we are given another identity of the people attending this Yom Kippur service, the identity of soldiers. Let's have a look at this print. This is a postcard print with a scene of German soldiers at an open air Yom Kippur service in 1870 during the Franco-Prussian War. It shows them just before the siege of Mertz, which was a decisive Prussian victory, and the war resulted in a united Germany for the first time in centuries. Underneath the picture, there is a title in German. It, it translates to Yom Kippur, and in brackets, Day of Atonement, before the Battle of Mertz, 1870. This postcard shows hundreds of Jewish soldiers depicted with prayer shawls and prayer books, and they are shown worshipping whilst on active service, gathered in the open air. They're gathered outside, um, outside Mertz in a valley, and you can spot Mets in the distance. They have got a makeshift bimar, the stand that the Torah goes on in the center. And there are three men in the middle who are presumably leading the service. They've even managed to acquire a Torah scroll and the worshippers are all sat around them in a circle. On the edges of the photograph, there are more men. These men are shown not wearing a tally for the prayer shawl, or holding a prayer book. Instead, these men are shown wearing uniform and armed. These are non-Jewish soldiers who are shown on guard, forming a tight circle around their Jewish soldiers um, and guarding them whilst they carry out worship. I find it a very inspiring, a very heartening picture to look at. It's very positive to think of these Jewish soldiers being respected and valued by their non-Jewish comrades and being able to carry out their worship openly, literally openly, because the service is taking place in the open air. It's a very inspiring image showing Jewish soldiers being valued in the military in the late 19th century. And perhaps because it is so inspiring, it explains why depictions of this service are so popular. This Yom Kippur service became widely talked about and images of it were widely produced in Germany and beyond. At one point, you could find images such as this depiction here in most Jewish households in Germany and further afield. As well as postcards such as this one, you would find images on household objects, cloths and scarves being particularly popular. And these can be found in museum collections across Europe. In our collection, we also have a um, 19th century kerchief which depicts this same service. The number of soldiers attending looks even larger to me here. There are crowds all gathered to attend the Yom Kippur service. They stand in rows and rows, all holding their prayer books. In the center, this one has an ark and a bimmer with a man leading the service from that. This object is 60 centimeters by 70 centimeters. So a very impressive object to have given its size. And it also has a very bold red background. There is a foliage around it, sort of almost in the shape of a wreath, giving it a sense of importance and ceremony. The two images showing these soldiers enjoying their freedom of religious expression whilst being overtly supported by the military installed a sense of patriotism amongst German Jewish communities at this time. 
it gave them a feeling of respect and value within the wider German community. And it went even further. It became a symbol of acceptance and tolerance all around the world, a symbol of how things could be done and should be done. The image is so powerful that it persisted in spite of um, first-hand accounts that actually contradict the story it tells. Because in fact, whilst I love the version of the story as depicted in this postcard and on the kerchief, the real events were actually significantly different. So what parts of this wonderful story do we get to keep? It is true that a group of Jewish soldiers serving during the siege on Metz asked for services on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And as a result, they were sent Isaac Blumenstein, a German rabbi to conduct this service. This still makes it a very significant event. Whilst Jewish people have served in the military in Europe for centuries, the recording of the provision of religious services for them, whilst um, on active duty, seems to have been relatively new. I also think there is something nice about the services happening because the men themselves asked for them. They wanted to, to worship, they wanted to observe the High Holy Days. At this time, there was no military rabbi, so Blumenstein was sent specifically to conduct this service. He was a rabbi in Germany, and a year after this, he would go on to become the chief rabbi of Luxembourg. However, whilst the service did take place, we then come to the differences. This image shows one service taking place, and there were actually two one on the 4th and one on the 5th of October 1870. But they weren't actually field services. In reality, they were held inside in two rooms that were normally used as sleeping quarters, not outdoors in the open air. And this gave them enough room because there weren't hundreds of participants. Rather, there were around 60 to 70. Although 60 to 70 still feels like a very impressive number. And it didn't reach the hundreds because no more Jewish soldiers wanted to attend, but because they couldn't be uh, spared for their duties or they were stationed too far away to be able to come to this service. Another feature we sadly have to lose is the soldiers standing guard around them. There is no account of non-Jewish soldiers acting as guards. It seems like they just simply had other duties whilst the service was going on. But it also seems that there was no need to provide a guard. They were indoors, so they were away from any immediate danger of attack, and the service was still carried out successfully without the guard. Whilst the reality may have been different from this postcard, the feeling at the time still seems to have been very positive. The soldiers appreciated it so much that they requested future Jewish services to attend whilst they were on active service. However, the victory of the German army in Metz ended the war, and so there was no need for this to take place. I find it a very fascinating object because it represents an ideal. The reality was different, but this is the version that proved so popular. If the postcard showed events as it actually occurred, a smaller Yom Kippur service held indoors with only Jewish soldiers and no guards, it would still be an interesting and an important object showing an early Jewish service for members of the armed forces and showing how much their faith meant to them and seeing their commanding officers respecting that and arranging a service for them to attend. Yet, by adding the additional details, depictions of this scene became widespread, well known, found in many households. It helped normalise the freedom of expression of Judaism. It gave people something to aspire to, and made the whole event something to celebrate. It celebrated the idea that you could be Jewish and a member of the armed forces. You could have both identities at once, rather than needing to hide your Jewish identity to become a member of the armed forces, as many people in this country did before the First World War. Even though this print includes many details that simply aren't true, this version became shared history in a way which may be one of the reasons why it was more widespread than the truth. Since 1870, hundreds of thousands of Jewish people have served in the armed forces around the world. As we approach Armed Forces Day, this object reminds us of the long history of Jewish military service, a service which continues to this day. 
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me for this week's Object Talk. Do join us again next week for another Object Talk on the theme of identity. We will see you there.